This is the class of 2012, y'all, right? So here we go here. We have Sade Bond. She's actually the class of uh, 2010, but we never had a cel um, celebration or a ceremony for her, and I totally apologized to her earlier this evening, and uh, I told her I would make it up to her somehow, some way, and she said, you can make it up to me by buying me a car one day. <laughs> so, pray for me, y'all, that Jesus will make it rain for me, so that I can you know, get her a very awesome yeah. graduation gift. Not everybody here on the list is here, but um, you know, feel free to give them a round of applause. Uh, anyways, we have uh, Christian Calderon, <laughs> Andrew Drew, Andrew, Catherine, Catherine, took off her shoes, Kevin Ho, Kevin Kong, Valerie V. Anthony Miller. Caroline Wynn. Joshua Wynn. Lisa Wynn. Tommy Wynn. Victor Wynn. Victoria Wynn. Scott Mann. Terry's going to Texas A&M, but I'll go. Giggle. <laughs> and uh, being bold. So I present you here in the class of uh, 2012 oh, and But everywhere you go, they carry the person of God with them. And Lord, that's your anointing is all their life. But people are amazed how wise and how but they have uh, come up for the things of God in their life. Lord, we thank you in advance. For the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of revelation is come upon them. And Lord, use them for your glory. And I ask that you will set them up for the time that when they go to college, Lord, there's people around them who will be ministered to them because they are carrying the presence of God through them. We thank you, Lord. I ask that you will help them, Lord, as they transist and uh, Lord, uh, tonight. In this induction service, is will uh, new markers in their life. It's a day we step up to be young adults with more responsibility, with more power and anointing that you have in your life. That they will make it a different than people around them. Thank we thank you, Lord. Thank you for their life. Thank you for all the time that they have studied in high school. And uh, now with uh, preparation for the new chapter, I ask that you give them grace and wisdom as they enter into the college year. As their life, Lord, uh, as we excel uh, among their peer, and Lord, as people who know that these are some of the of the most high God. So thank you, Lord. You give them in your hand. And we ask the blessing that you will bless them cause them to be a blessing of house of the people. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 A special word from both Crystal and Christy. So at this time, come up here and give us a special word about this. So, yeah. this is from Andy. He starts off to say, I apologize that Twin and I cannot be here today. Just know that we are here in spirit, and if there was a way, we would not have missed this occasion. I was thinking about saying something individually for all of you for you all, and to highlight the best quality that each of you possess. But then I realized you all have something in common, and also that is the best quality about each and every one of you, purity of the heart. A great teacher once said that spiritual maturity is not based on how much Bible knowledge you know, although it is important, but is about how much you love. And as I shared in life with you all, 
all? It is without a doubt that you love God, love those around you, and love yourself. And therefore, Kevin Ho, you graduate with the highest honor. Anthony, you graduate with the highest honor. Caroline, you graduate with the highest honor. Joshua, you graduate with the highest honor. Andrew, you graduate with the highest honor. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Catherine, you graduate with the highest honor. He made me emphasize this repeat it several times. Um, remember, you were always a success to me despite your accomplishments, and it is truly an honor to share in life with you. You are my little brothers and little sisters, and I love you. And to the church, get to know them. Spend time with them, and you will receive them as your own. You will see that each of them are unique and special, and you'll realize that they are treasures in your own backyard. 1 Corinthians 12.23 says, And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greatest honor, and our Unpresentable parts have greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to the part that lacks it, and that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. So honor them this day and love on them. Not too much, though, because they are still mine. <laughs> and from Twin, she read, um, Hi, graduates. I am very blessed to have seen most of y'all graduate, but most of y'all, most of all to see y'all grow. Kevin, I want to tell you how much I love you, and I'm so proud in the growth I see in you. I thank you all for all your help with administration, and Caroline, for you as well, for having such a servant heart. And Joshua, my beloved, I love you and hope you will never forget that. You guys are all very dear to me, and I bless you all on this day, and I'm excited to see what new territories God has for you. Now, hopefully I can also say some words to y'all. Um, so on behalf of the youth leaders, Twin and Andy, um, I would like to wrap it up from us and tell y'all how privileged and blessed we are to have had the opportunity to watch you grow throughout high school and the honor to see what God will do in your life in this new season that he opens up. And I am personally so blessed to call you all my friends, um, to be able to share the intimate things in my life with you guys, and to know that you trust me to share the intimate things in y'all's lives as well. Um, I love y'all tremendously. You guys know that. And I am so happy to be here to get to celebrate your accomplishments, one of them which is graduating high school. But the biggest and most important accomplishment that I see in y'all's lives is that each and every single one of y'all is a lover of God. And um, I hear y'all talk about God as you are in love with him, not from a theological aspect or um, from a religious manner, but you guys are truly in love with our Creator, and that is so yeah. inspirational and touching, and I am so blessed to see um, this future generation that we were seeing about earlier to rise up, to take their place, to start a revival, and um, just to surrender your life and your will to God is the biggest accomplishment and the biggest success ever, and so... Um, as I know, wherever I go, I always talk about you guys and talk about how much I love y'all and get to spend time with y'all. And instead of um, now calling y'all the youth, I get to call you guys my fellow young adult friends. So welcome and uh, know that we love you guys you. a lot. I love you. Gosh, what to say? You guys are so amazing. When I was looking at y'all up here, um, when Pastor Khan was praying for you, I was thinking one word. What I saw is consecrated. You guys, each one of you, are so very set apart. And I'm so proud of that. You all love God. You're all mature. You're all gifted. And you all know how to use your gifts. 
I'm so proud of you guys for, like Andy said, your love. You guys are definitely lovers of God, and you love people well. Okay, so I never, ever told you guys that you'll have a junior Holy Spirit because you're in the youth. I never tell that to Seth, either. You guys have had the full measure of God living inside of you this whole time. Um, we never taught you guys that there's some kind of seasonal Christianity where you learn how to be, a, uh, you learn how to love God and be in school, or you learn how to, you know, whatever. We never did that. The class that you guys have been in this whole time has been Christianity 101. <laughs> you learn, you learn the most important aspects of God in your relationship with Him and with people. You learn to forgive. You learn to trust God, you learn to pray, you learn to connect with God. Um, you learn to value the most important things and to keep the first thing first. And you guys all know those things. Well, I want to tell y'all that you never, ever graduate from Christianity 101. <laughs> ever. Never, ever. You will never graduate all of those things. So when you go to college... When you're here with the YAs, when you're um, when you have babies one day, when you're married, whenever that is, you will never ever graduate from Christianity 101 ever. You'll always be a student of Christianity 101, the basics, the first things that you have to have right to do anything else. And what I want to tell y'all is, although you haven't graduated from that, <laughs> you're all really really good at it. And I want to tell you that I trust you. That's really huge. Um, to the YAs that are here, um, I want to tell you guys that you are getting some of the most amazing, they're not kids anymore, what are y'all, The most, some of the most amazing people, some of the most amazing, awesome, lovely people that I've ever met. Um, and so, as hard as it is, I want to say the words that I release you into the next season of your life. Um, and see whatever God has for you. I said, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm trying not to. <laughs> I release you into the next season. I release you into the hands of your um, next fathers and mothers in the, in the um, YA. However, I want you to know that y'all are so not released in that <laughs> I love you guys and I'm committed to you. And whatever you need. Um, I was talking to Caroline earlier. She's like, yeah, you know. It's going to be hard, whatever. No, y'all are all going to have cars. <laughs> you can go wherever you want. You can come see us. It's okay. But we love you guys. We release you into the next season. And I want you all to know that I'm proud of you, especially um, of how consecrated you are and how much you love God and how surrendered your lives are. Anyway, I bless you all. And I thank you for letting me be a part of your lives. Brad actually... Um, was the first one to feel called to the youth ministry, <laughs> not me. He told me, yeah, I feel called to the youth ministry, and I said, oh, too much liability. That was my words. <laughs> I already announced that, I'm just saying. <laughs> I said, too much liability. It, I had to actually really hear from God and be um, called upon by Stephen before I agreed to that. But I want you all to know that you guys have brought me so much joy, and I'm so blessed to have you guys in my life, men. <laughs> Take this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk. I want to talk. I want to talk. I want to talk. I want to Well, I can't find my uh, 20 page notebook, so uh, I'm going to have to come up with something right now. No. I'm just going to say from my heart I, I already cried. I shouldn't cry anymore. But, uh, I was not only your pastor, I was more your dad. I, <laughs> I should be crying. Um, I, it's, this is really strength, though. We, uh, we, I just uh, want to say that you have blessed me. Um, not just, uh, not just uh, being your pastor, but being a part of your life. Your dad. I mean, I know a lot of you guys don't have dads, and uh, I got to be, it was my privilege to be your dads and to be there for you. <laughs> I already cried when Audrey was saying, um, Stephen, how do you feel about the youth going to YA? 
And uh, she was sitting in front of me, and I, I looked at her, and I felt something dripping on my shirt. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and I said, Audrey, you need to pray for me. I'm having a hard time. And so I feel like there's a bond that took place. But uh, I want to tell you that you're, you're not, you're, we're, we're one family. This is VBC family. You just go into another place in the same family. And you're going to have different, um, you know, activities. You can be under, um, I, and I know that you guys will serve where you're at and uh, will open your hearts to everyone where you're at and uh, continue to um, be who you are because who you are is awesome. And, uh, <laughs> lovable and sweet and uh, I, I can't say I had a better group of young people to mentor and to uh, cry with and to, to um, hang out with. Lots of boba, that's why I'm going back to the gym. Um, that was the uh, biggest mistake and the most costly mistake. No, I'm kidding. That was Bonding. It was worth all the money and the extra weight that I have to lose off. But uh, uh, I, I believe that you're going to do great things. I believe that the words that are spoken over you are real and they're from God. Pursue it. Take a hold of it. Make it come alive. And uh, I, I, I bless you to soar with the Lord in the spirit, in the power of his might. I bless you to be the light into your schools, into your colleges. And I, I cancel every statistic against uh, young adults that go into the colleges. I say that is not true of you. I declare that you will turn those statistics around and you are going to be the ones that are going to mess the whole paradigm of what happens to young people when they go into college up. And you're going to be a people that are going to bring not just a message of God loves you, but you're going to demonstrate his love. And you will be the message. And uh, I, I I, want to say to those who aren't here, I don't know why you're not here. Uh, <laughs> but I forgive you. <laughs> now, I know that some of you guys are in Dallas and family stuff and all that. Uh, we did not forget about you. And we're, you're going to watch this later. Um, I want to say to you as well, we uh, are proud of you. Uh, through this camera, we bless you, we honor you, and you have uh, not just uh, been a part of a church, you've been part of a family that grows in love. And so, uh, I release you to be young adults and to be a blessing to the YA and the church and to be a voice and not be shy and all that, you know, that's bondage, right? Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, every single one of you, uh, it is an honor. And uh, it's not over. You still can come to my house and um, eat my food. <laughs> drink healthier drinks. No, no more Coca-Cola, OK? <laughs> I, I want to tell you that. Um, you're going to be blessed by Pastor Wong, okay? He's going to teach you other things, and he's going to uh, give you what you need in this season, okay? He is God's appointed for you in this season. Do not feel like uh, this is different. It is a little different, but it is God's will for your life. Receive from this man, okay? He has a lot to give you. Receive from the young adults that are here. Open your hearts to them. And uh, that's all I got. I hope I didn't take 10 minutes. That's okay. It's so, good. so I just want to say a prayer. I, Lord, I release your sons and daughters, God, to, to your perfect will, God. And I pray even now that your anointing would come upon them in this next season of their life, Lord God. That they would be conscious of your voice. They would live for your glory, God. They would put your word first and foremost in their, in their lives, Lord, before their education, before their career, before their friends, Lord God. And they would 
chew on, meditate, seek after you, God, in your word, and God, sit in your presence. Lord, I just bless them because I meant to do this because I know it's going to be really tough in this season where there's so much uh, traffic emotionally, mentally, educationally. Lord, I just pray that they would rise above the storm that will come against them to, to choke the word out of them, Lord. I just declare it will not happen, Lord. I declare they will bear fruit in this season, Lord God. It will spring forth and they would be the ones who would... Uh, Plant the seeds in others, Lord God, and nurture that seed, Lord, as you send them out and, and wherever they go, Lord. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for each and every one of them as a light into this world that's getting darker and darker. But we declare that your light in your people is going brighter and brighter and ever increasing. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. Yeah. Um, at this time, we're going to have the presentation of seniors. That's what we have on. And uh, good day. Hi. On behalf of YA, I wanted to welcome the seniors to the YA. And I wanted to let you know that my first impression of y'all, whenever I first met you, it's always been a lasting impression that I've had, where you've always had a lot of energy, a lot of passion. And I've always liked you a lot. <clears throat> And I've always enjoyed my like, praise and worship with you too. And it's, it's always been a, a pleasure in that way, and I enjoyed it a lot. And it's been great seeing y'all grow up over the years. And, um, and also with, and, and I also see y'all as a feature of YA also. Like y'all are going to be the future leaders in YA too. Um, and I can see that happening. And at the same time, um, I was going to let you know that if you need anything, like, um, like the YA leadership is here for you too. If you have any questions about college or school, um, you can let us know and anything, any advice you need on life too. And also, um, as representative of YA, I wanted to let you know about the, we wanted to present a gift to y'all through the small gathering that we're having later on tonight. And then also for next Saturday, we're going to be having um, dinner on us where a YA is going to be sponsoring a youth, I mean, a senior for dinner. And <laughs> the fellow YA. Yes, the fellow YA will be sponsoring you for dinner. And it's going to be at Hokkaido at 6 p.m. And we have gifts and also another special presentation that we'll be having for y'all that night also. And so, um, also on behalf of YA, like this event was brought together by a lot of people from YA, um, whether it was their, their time, their opinion, their help, and... So there's just been like so many people that were able to help me with this event. And so um, anywhere from Big Bay and Min, Pastor Long, um, Julianne, Drang, and um, like just having like just the verbal support like from Jennifer too about having this event for y'all. And also to the drivers that we're going to be having later on tonight, um, such as Ben and Yoon, um, Sean and, and Sean, and also myself. So, um, but also, um, you'll be meeting other YA tonight also that will be at the after party also. So I look forward to that. And also this event wouldn't have been made possible without um, Andy and Twin also and Crystal. And without your support, it wouldn't have, you know, you know, we just want to be able to bless you tonight. So, <clears throat> so on behalf of YA, welcome. And now I have <laughs> Hey, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone like pretty much stole all the sense of those worlds out of my mouth. But she wanted me to give like first impressions of everybody. I remember I think it was that boy in 2009, and I was in college and going through a hard time. And Kevin just comes to me, hi, I'm Kevin, and give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember I first met Caroline, I think 2009, 2010. Um, but most of my bonding with like the, the young, the youth, I was like a, a quasi youth worker or something, but um, most, most of my bonding took place with them, like Wednesday nights at Stevens House, them praying with me and for me. And I just, I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate your zeal for the Lord. And uh, just as Pastor Stephen was saying, don't let it die down. Don't listen to the lies that people try to tell you about going to college. Don't listen to any rumors about, you know, 
or, or, or sayings about going to the college or the next uh, section of this church. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm sure I can speak on behalf of uh, Pastor Long, Pastor Khan, and all the other uh, YA leaders when we say, if you have any ideas or any passions, I mean, feel free to share it with them. Um, I'm excited about you guys being legal now. You can do, like, some crazy street evangelism and <laughs> stuff like that. Like, the Caroline, like, I'm just... <laughs> Yeah, but I'm just, um, you know, just welcome, and, you know, we love you guys, and it's been such a pleasure seeing you guys grow up, and, you know, now y'all are unleashed out into the world legally, like, because, like I said, it's, it's just a continuation, but, yeah, it's a new season for you, and I just call y'all blessed, and can't wait to see what God's going to do through y'all. A little bit. But you know, the, the great thing about it is, I, you know, for me, I see him like a brother, and um, I enjoy him being different than me. Um, it's because I, I, you know, I kind of get sick of myself sometimes, <laughs> and so it's always good to have people that's different. And I remember him saying, "Man, I, this is really hard for me." And you know, for for me, um, I was just like, "It's going to be okay." You know, and I, you know, and it was really hard for him. And he stood up here, and it, I realized something that he really saw you all as, as like his own children. And uh, being a father myself of, you know, my own children, and having being spiritual father to many people, some of them in here, you know, it hurts when you, you know, you feel that. And you know, I'm sitting there saying, but Pastor Stephen. They're not going away. <laughs> you know, they're, they're still here. He goes, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, like it's not like they're never. You know, we never allow you to sit over in the youth area. You know, I mean, we don't care where you sit, right? But I want to just welcome you, uh, and and I, I want to tell you that what you learned from Pastor Stephen, and I know he's taught you well. Okay, bring that to the next place. You know, uh, we don't need, now, if you have baggage there, leave your baggage. <laughs> just move up, you know? And so, you know, it's all the little things that you had to deal with, you don't have to carry those burdens and the baggage along. But carry the, the love, carry the unity, carry the teachings. Because I've, I've sat with Pastor Stephen, you know, through the, the years that we've been here together, three years plus. I'm, we drank a lot of boba and had dinner, and you know, I've listened to him. I've listened to him talk Camp about out. God, and he's he's very sound. What we call in the ministry sound doctrine, and him and I believe in a lot of the same things. Uh, our our mannerism and how we go about those things are different because we are good. You know, who wants the same? You know, could you imagine if everybody was a person and it's the same person? We get tired. Of you know, I would, you know, and I know none of y'all would get tired of me, but man, if there was a thousand of me walking around, I'd get sick of me, okay? And so, all these things, and, and so I want you to know that, you know, and I'm just going to talk to you about transition tonight, just a little bit about transition, okay? And it's not going to be long, because uh, I was asked to try to stop it early, because there's a lot of things, and you know, the cool thing about being a young adult, and we're going to talk about that, is there is so much more freedom. Okay? There's a lot of freedom that you will have. And with that freedom, there are certain things that you have to be careful about. But it's a lot of, you know, you get to finally stretch your wings and, and be an adult. Nobody calls you youth and and, you know, you get to do certain things at certain times and people treat you like an adult because that's what they expect of you, right? Um, I'm often told this one time from my, my uh, spiritual parents. They say that you, the way you are, will let people know how you want to be treated. And so if you want to be treated like an adult, then you need to act like an adult. 
Yeah? And if you want to be treated with love, then you must be loving. If you want to be treated with honor, then you must be honored. Now, do we all live to those ideals? We try. Do we mess up? Yeah. When we mess up, we repent and say, man, brother, forgive me. You know, I was just the devil hat. You know, or something. <laughs> Sometimes we blame the devil more than we should. But, <laughs> but so, when you become an adult, you're going to realize that very much so. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you tonight for all the things. We thank you for the wonderful meal, the wonderful preparation. Thank you for those that labor for their brethren. God, we ask that your word will transcend us tonight. Reach us, touch us, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming, especially who's an old veteran of YA? We've been in here more than a year. You know, young adult, raise a hop. There you go, come on. Some of y'all been here for a while. So go ahead and put the both hands up. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Somebody's got the leg and hand up. So, you know what? We, we welcome you, and you have a lot of fun. You've got a lot of older brothers and sisters in young adults, and they have a lot, they have a lot of experience about everything, okay? And you're going to be not there yet. But you will be there to a point where you're going to be saying, you know, my next level in life will be, I want to have a family, I want to be married. And so that's the fun next thing you're going to deal with besides college. Okay? College is going to be fun and you're going to enjoy it. I want to tell you something. Okay? At this very moment of your life, take every opportunity for enjoying in the things of God. Okay, I want to tell you a great, uh, because I always have this saying, and I teach this to the, uh, the veterans here, uh, uh, young adults in this year, is because the moment it's gone, it's gone. I remember when I was in college, I mean, men, you know this, right? We stay up literally all night. I mean, we stay up all night, have, we'll eat pizza, and we'll cram for tests. It'd be like 3, 4 in the morning, drinking 10 pots of coffee, going to the bathroom every 5 minutes. You know, and just, man, my eyes are like, just, you know, and we're running to class and all that. And, and, and you know, you thought at that moment is so hard and everything and waking up. And I remember I had some college buddies and, you know, and uh, man, they would leave stuff everywhere. And you're telling them, come on, man, clean up something, you know. But, you know, there was a lot of fun and a lot of things. But you know what? Being 40 years old now, being a father, being a husband, being all these things, there is no way I can do that again. If I went back to college and got into a dorm and I see a 20-something-year-old, a 20-something-year-old, hey, man, you want to go stay up all night? I'm like, oh, man, get out of here. <laughs> see? And so you've got to enjoy where you are at this moment now. Because when you get to my age, or when you get to men's age, <laughs> okay, or Joe's age, or some of these other people's ages, especially mine, I'm much older than men. But when you get to that place, there is no way you want to go back and say, man, let me go back into the dorms, and, and man, let me have cold pizza and cram all night long, and, we, and you know, we stay up all night and play video games and have tournaments and, and a whole bunch of, you're not going to have that. Okay, when you get to my age, you know what? You know, a night of excitement for me is just being able to go to sleep early. <laughs> okay, and, and just being able to get everything done before. I mean, last night I did not go to sleep until four, and the night before I went to sleep at one and got up at, at, at four. Okay, there's so much going on, and so for right now, enjoy right now. Enjoy where you are right now. You know, you're thinking, you say, oh man, I had so much fun in youth and I don't know what's going to happen in YA. I heard Pastor Mom, he's a hard one. <laughs> you know, look at him. He's always yelling and screaming. <laughs> I hear him preach on the, and you know, I know they had to have his volume way down and he's still loud. <laughs> right? He's so serious all the time. And I said, actually, I'm not all that serious, only when I'm ministering. But you know, if you take me out for an iced tea or a, see, I, I can have tapioca. So y'all can buy me as many as you like. 
I would like the green tea with 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 uh, cream and uh, and the tapioca. That's the one. I think it's number three at tea yeah. house. <laughs> number two, number two, number three, number three. So you can buy all you want for me, okay? All right. And I like that. Anyway, but there are but the the reason why we are so um, the reason why we tend to hold on to our past is because of fear. Because, you know, everybody that walks into the next place is like, well, I don't know how's it going to be. And so that fear causes us to hold on to the past because we're familiar. But what happens is the Bible says that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a, a sound mind, right? He gave us a sound mind, so we got to be strong. He gave us a, a spirit of power and of love, and so we can, and a strong mind, so that we can go to the next place. Because when you hold on to your past of where you are, you would never get to where God wants you to be. Amen. Okay. So I want to tell you. Turn everybody with me to the. We're going to read basically two things. We're going to read about Adam in the book of Genesis, chapter two. If you don't know where Genesis is. It's actually the very first book of the Bible. Okay? Alright, the very first book. And chapter 2, and I want to read a verse 6, and then we're going to go all the way down to verse 15. Go to verse 6, verse 15. Okay? And then we're going to jump down to verse 19. So, 6, 15, and 19. Genesis chapter 2. And this talks about, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Alright, jump down. And God took the man, in verse 15, and he put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Alright, jump down again. Alright? 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them into Adam to see what he could call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. Okay. And now I want you to just, as I'm talking, I want you to turn to Galatians chapter 4. Okay, and we're going to talk a couple of things. Did you know that when God created Adam, Adam was not an infant. He was an adult. You know, so many times when we read about Adam, we think that no, there was, you know, Adam was not, you never read anywhere that Adam needed to be milk fed. The Lord God did not form Adam as a child. He formed him as a grown man. He was, I believe, he was probably 30. Okay? And he was grown. That means the minute God made him, he was able to walk, he was able to talk, he was able to labor, he was able uh, to create, he was able to speak to God. He was a grown man. Okay? And so, one of the things I have a question I asked during discipleship class, I recommend all of you that are coming up through uh, and, uh, YA is you take my class, not because it is very good. And in my class, I have a question to ask. And this question is, did Adam have a belly button? Okay? Well, you can answer that on your own. All right? Did he have a belly button? But when Adam was created, he was grown. And so the reason why he was grown is because there was responsibility upon him. And so now that you have come, Kevin, to the young adult, you are now considered adult. That means you have responsibility. You know why you have responsibility? It's because God trusts you. God trusts us. So because God created Adam, created Adam in his likeness, and he was a grown man, he put Adam in a place of responsibility. And tonight, there are many of us, even if it doesn't matter if you've been in, uh, in this group, or it doesn't matter if you've been here for a couple minutes, or you've been in YA for two years or five years. There, as an adult, there are responsibilities that is placed upon you as a Christian. It's because there is much that is required of you. 
You see, that's why a lot of people do not want to go from youth to young adult and they are in fear. The reason they are in fear is because they don't think that they have the ability to do what God has for them to do. Yeah, right? Amen? And there are so many times that people are like that. They're like, Pastor, I don't know if I can start a business. And I feel like God's taught me to do a business, but I don't know if I have the ability. Or I don't know if I have the knowledge. Or I don't know if I have this. If God has placed that in your heart, and you know that that idea did not come from you, then obviously He trusts you to have what you need to go to the next place. And so there's a transitioning from old things or a transitioning from being infant to adulthood. When Adam was created, he was perfect. He was sinless. And so when, G when he sinned, what happened was man regressed. He went backwards. Okay? He regressed back into a enslaved state, okay? When you were a child, I often thought, you know, as a father, I look at my children and say, man, they are so blessed. And you know, people say, yeah, Pastor, this was, look at, you know, I go in in the middle of the night and my kids are just laid out and just, you know, there are arms everywhere, you know, and they're just peacefully sleeping. I'm like, look, they don't have a worry in the world, you know? And I often think, Man, wouldn't it be great to go back to that age? And then when I really thought about it, I said, no, I don't want to go back. You know why I don't want to go back? Because I had to depend on everybody for everything. And that's no fun. Daddy, can we go to the store? Daddy, can we go to the store? Okay, I will let you go to the store. Daddy, can you take us to the store? Okay, you will go to the store when I tell you that I can take you to the store. <laughs> But when I need to go to the store, I get in my car and go to the store. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> right? And then when we, I had to spend, you know, I've been busy this week. And so I, I you know, God has blessed me. So I got able to spend the uh, early morning to uh, early afternoon with my children. We, we went down to downtown and, and walking around and looking at fish and whole things, and, and all of a sudden I thought to myself, my kids said, Daddy, can I have Dippin' Dots? <laughs> you know, you know what Dippin' Dots are? Yeah, and, and, see, only, only, only young folks know that. <laughs> I didn't know what it was until it, Daddy, it's ice cream, but they're like in pellets. <laughs> you know? And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and so they kept asking me, asking me, you know, I, and then I thought to myself, they're so blessed because they know Daddy is going to buy for them or whatever, right? And, 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 and they never have a worry. But then I said, no, you got to eat your food first. No, you got to do this. And they kept saying, Daddy, when, when? And so it's like 30, 40 minutes go by and you eat your food. See, when I go on Dippin' Dots, I said, how much is that? <laughs> See, that's, there is a sense of freedom and an empowerment when you're an adult. Say, how much is that? Yeah, what? Okay, See, my kids can't do that. They're like, Daddy, got any money? <laughs> See, that's why transition from youth or in the spirit from being taught as infants spiritually to adulthood, there's a sense of empowerment and freedom. That's why the Bible says where the presence of the Lord is, there is freedom. See, God cannot, we taught this at... Uh, at uh, Winter Retreat. The Bible says in Galatians 4, go with me to Galatians 4. Is this helping anybody? Yes. See, it's not just helping the new YA, it's helping the ones that's been in here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Alright? Look at what it says in chapter 4 of Galatians. It says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. Okay? And so there is a sense of entitlement when you come to adulthood. Okay? There is a sense of empowering. You know, I, I often think you 
won't know this until you yourselves one day will have children. You know, I often hear, you know, uh, when I was coming up, the adults would tell me, Joe says, man, being a kid is so good, so easy. You don't have no burdens, you don't have no mortgage, you don't have to deal with paying the bills, you don't have to do, you know, worry about this, this, and that. You don't have to worry about paying your electric note, you don't have to worry. All you do is eat, sleep, go to school, and play. And then even if my children, the smaller ones, I have to give them back. They don't even have to bathe themselves, right? <laughs> then I thought to myself again, I said, would that be blissful if I was going to go back like that? No! <laughs> it would not! Because when I want dipping dots, I don't need to wait for somebody to buy me dipping dots. <laughs> I can buy it for myself. <laughs> See? That's the same thing, right? <laughs> and eat it enough. When I turned forward, I remember poor, uh, you know, we're just family, okay? So, see, we have a lot of fun. I remember when I turned 40 last month, I remember Julianne texted me, and many, many of you text me, but Julianne says, so how does it feel? Wow, you, you are middle-aged for sure now, right? <laughs> and she, and, and I said, yeah, yeah. And she said, man, you know, and she didn't say it in a mean way. She said, you're older now. Old, you know. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. And I said, is it true what they say that the new 40, the 40 is the new 20? And she's like, good try, pass the law. <laughs> and I said, that's okay. Because when I was 20, I was always broke. <laughs> it's a lot better now than when I was 20. You know what I'm saying? When I was 20... Okay, I had no money, and so I had no honey. <laughs> but now I'm 40, right? And so with age, you should be able to be empowered with something. Any of you here were broke when you was in college? <laughs> when you still in college. <laughs> only only Yim Kai had her hand down. Which we were like that. <laughs> She's like, I wasn't broke now. You know, I mean, you were, but then... There was a point where you thought to yourself, man, I can't wait to get out of college. I can't wait to do these things. And when you get out, I'm like, I, can't, I wish I was back in college. Yeah. Right? But it's because you're not willing to embrace the moment, like Pastor Steve was saying, the moment of where God has for you and his will for your life now. It's going to be scary because you don't know anybody that's in YA. But let me tell you, it was much more scary for Chardin. Because she did not come up with a group of you like you did. She came by herself and, and I, I didn't even know. Nobody told me nothing. Okay? And she's walking around with one dad's shoulder and she was a hug. And I'm like, oh, okay, I guess Pastor Stevens giving her permission to be in our, our classes. And, our, and I'm like, why is she always here? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You know? And so, poor Sade, she was going around like she was a... A YA and then a youth, and so she was she was double minded. You know, poor girl, she had an identity crisis, and that was our fault at that moment. She don't have one. It was our fault because she didn't know where she's going. And so I want to ch uh, challenge you that adulthood should be embraced. I promise you, today when you are when you become an adult, you are able to drive your own car. There's a sense of empowerment. It's been your friend would say, hey, can you meet me down at the local coffee shop? Hey, I want to talk to you. And you don't have to say, mama, I need to meet my friend. Please, mama, I do all that. You don't have to do that. You just say, I'm going. Now, if you live at home, be obedient to your parents. But you know what I'm trying to tell you, okay? There's a sense of empowerment. And so God is sitting there saying, there's a time for you, and it's time for you now. That you were there, and through Pastor Stephen's great love, and, and, and nurturing, and teaching you, delivering you, and doing all these things, you are now being entrusted as adults, because you are the generation that is going to do the things that Mim's doing, Joe's doing, Yim's doing, Han's doing, Paul's doing, you know, you's doing. You know, you are the ones that's going to be out there in the back handing out visitors' cards, shaking hands, doing all these things. And a lot of times I say, man, Pastor, I don't want to do that. It's no fun. Let me tell you something. 
It is fun when God has his hand upon you and you're doing those things. You will meet people that will change your life. And all of a sudden you come in and there's somebody at the door and they're going to greet you and you greet them and you're going to feel friendships like you've never felt, felt before. You think you're close now. Wait until you find someone that you can really hook up and the level of knowledge and understanding is going to expand. It's going to expand. And so your transition should, see, it was never God's intention for Adam to be an infant. It was never God's intention to, to form a baby. It's because babies cannot be trusted with responsibility of the king. And so when you graduate, God's going to say, hey, all right, we're going to get you to lead some things. And the things that you learn, all the devils you've been casting out, guess what? That's not going to go to waste when you go to YA. And the cool thing is when you're in YA, you see this big Mission Brazil thing we're doing? You couldn't do that until you're YA. We can't take you out of the country. I am, I, let me tell you something. We can't get an attorney to make me a document Thick enough with enough verbiage and trust your parents would trust me to take you down to the favelas of Brazil. First of all, if there was a document like that, my name would not be on that. Okay? <laughs> Pastor Lama would not be responsible. There is no way, all right, to go down to the favela and the crackland or crackalandia and to see those kinds of things. There is no way. I'm having a hard time taking the YA that's been in YA for a while. Okay? And so there is so much more that you haven't even seen or tasted yet. Okay, there is so much more. And here, God's intention was always to make Adam a grown man, an adult. One who is able to be responsible. One that someone can look to. One that he can give wisdom yeah, I know some of you have some wisdom, but you're not going to be able to see that wisdom mature until you are spiritually adults. Okay? I was talking to someone uh, today, and she said, you know, Pastor Mark, I'm so glad that I know you and have you and, give, and that you can give me advice. You know, I mean, when you hear that, you know, and she's an adult, Okay, college grad. Okay? But you don't ever hear someone of that level go to a very small child and say, you know what, I'm so glad. <laughs> my daughter's Luciana, eight years old. I'm, Luciana, I'm so glad that you're able to speak into my life. <laughs> Nobody does that. Right? And so now, you transition, embrace it. Don't be fearful of it. Because when you are fearful of it, it will slow down, or you will be slow to get you a blessing. Mm -hmm. See, Abraham, the Bible talks about Abraham in the book of Genesis as well. And he tells Abraham in Genesis 17, he says, Go ye out of your country, and I will show you where the, your promised land will be, and there I will make a covenant. Now imagine if Abraham said, You know what? I like it here. My daddy grew up here. <laughs> I grew up here. I got all my homeboys here. I, I have my favorite river here. You know what? You know what? My grandmother's here. My uncles are here. My sisters are here. I'm comfortable here. And he just waits around. A year goes by. He don't embrace what God is. He won't transition. So he just wait a year, two years. A decade goes by. Uh, Adam, I mean, God says, Abraham, get you out of that place. And go to the place I will show you. Will you go? I already show you to. Well, I like it. I don't know. If he doesn't go quickly. And he doesn't embrace his destiny. And he doesn't embrace the place where God wants him to be. Like Pastor Stephen said. This is God's will for your life at this time. If you don't embrace it. You can be sitting in YA for a decade. And never get the blessings that God has for you. Because of fear. Because of, well, not knowing. So adulthood is a place of great power. There's 
great responsibility and freedom. Because when you are here where you are, there's a sense of responsibility, but then there's a sense, and many people have still children in them. There's nothing wrong with that. You have the benefit of two worlds. Now remember Dr. John Morgan said something I like. He's the pastor of Sage Mont Church. He said he tells his young people, and they want to, he goes, let me tell you something. I've been old and I've been young. Y'all just been young. There's a lot of wisdom in that. You know? I've been old and I've been young. Y'all just been young. Okay? And so there is so much. And if you are willing to be like Abraham, to embrace where God is taking you, there, there are things that you're going to enjoy in initial and YA. And they're going to be relationships. And there's you think you you think your conversation is deep now. Wait until you hook up with some of these brothers and sisters that are in the young adults, and when they speak to you, you'll see your conversation is much more deep and much richer. Ask Crystal. She's a great liaison. Andy is a great liaison and twin between young adults and you. Because the conversation that she has with me today is much different than the conversation she has with you. It's much different. Is that true? It is true. <laughs> no pressure. It is true. Okay? And you're going to learn some keys into adulthood that will help and change your life. And so I want to tell you, God's intention was always to bestow power, authority, Freedom, But with that freedom, there comes great responsibility. You know what? The youth is going to look to you. And they're going to say, you know what? How you live your life now is going to dictate how successful they are going to be. Okay? They look, they're going to look up to you. And you're going to reach back to them. And it's always a process. We look up, pastors, as pastors, we look up to God. But we look back to help people come to the next place, the next level. Embrace where you are now. And some of you that's been in young adults a while, there are things that you need to re-embrace. You need to re-embrace the unity. You need to re-embrace the friendships. You need to re-embrace Friday night. Because let me tell you something. Yeah, you could go see movies and do on Friday night. That gets old. But when you come to Friday night, there are relationships being built over the dinner table. There are relationships being built. Tonight we're going to go and y'all going to have a, a party and we're going to enjoy it. And, and it's so well planned, Han huh? and Min and Bebe. All of them have really did great work. Jennifer, and all. you're going to feel the richness. You're going to get close. And then when you come and have Bible study with us and with me and all the brothers and sisters, you're going to learn some things that it, you probably already learned, but it's going to be different. It's going to be better. It's going to be a different perspective. And so I want to tell you tonight, wherever you are in this place, and maybe you are just a visitor today, maybe you are in a different category because, you know, you're just so special they don't even have a category for you. <laughs> Amen. Alright? He is out of the box. Alright? They, they don't even have us. They haven't come up with the names for your category. But that's okay. Alright? So tonight, I, I just want for you to think about what I just shared about transition. And adulthood. Freedom, responsibility, trust, empowerment, liberty. Wow. Mentor. And some of you will reach back. You know, Andy and twins getting married. Y'all, some of you are going to reach back and take their place. Because they're going to transition into being young married couples. 
Can we have a class for that? And then when you have a young married couple, you have a couple of kids. Once you have a child, we kick you out. <laughs> we kick you out of a young married couple, you go right into iFam. Inspired families. You know? And then if you get if if you get married, like we told uh Lama Sophia, hey, we got a baby go, bro. <laughs> Next level. So there's transition all the time. And let me tell you something. Things that grow and bear fruit. Things that grow and bear fruit go through a state of transition all the time. We must always be growing. You look at the fruit trees. There's seasons that they go through. But they're always growing. And the moment you stop growing and you, you know what, you know who can stop your growth? It's not me. You know that the devil can't stop your growth? There's only one person that can stop your growth. It's you. It's you. It's like, Pastor, you, you, need, you, you need the devil can't even stop me? The devil, he, he's better. No, the Bible says, resist, submit your life unto God, resist the devil, and he must be. See? The only person that can stop you from growing spiritually and bearing fruit is you. It's not a pastor. You can't blame a pastor. Well, he didn't preach right. He didn't let me do right. He hurt me. He, well, that brother hurt me. That church hurt me. You know what? You get, keep hurt. That hurt will cause you to stop growing. And anything that can bear fruit must grow. It must change. It must grow. It must become Adam. That's why even the trees, did you know that when you deal with uh, people who own orchards, they will tell you that tree will not have its best and sweetest fruit until adulthood. Wow. And so now is your transition. Now we welcome you into another phase. Not another family, just another phase. A great phase. A joyous phase. Because you still have zero responsibility, but you have all of the benefits. Amen. Let us stand. Tonight I want to pray for anyone and Pastor Stephen can help me please. We want to pray with you if you desire prayer. I'd like to just put my lay my hands upon your shoulder tonight. Especially for you seniors that have graduated. And I just want to shake your hand and welcome you to the next great thing. Well, I'm going to open the altar up. Go ahead, Sam. And for anyone, this is not just for them, but if you're here tonight and you just say, Pastor, this message hit me because I feel like I'm at a stagnant place and I'm not growing, I'm not transitioning, I am not bearing fruit. I want to grow up. I want to be a grown-up. I want to be an adult so I can have the things that God has declared for me. I want to let go of the things of the past because the past is the past. I can learn from them, but let us not take them with us if it's not of God, especially bad. Okay? Tonight, if there's any one of you here, I don't know, I see some familiar faces, I need to see guests. If you were here for the first time and you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you have never said, Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. If tonight you come and you were to walk out of this place, and God forbid, I'm not putting this on you, but God forbid that you were to pass away and you don't know you're going to go to heaven, that you need to get to this altar and accept the Lord. Because the Bible says at the moment, this Bible says that when we cry out to God, He hears us. He hears us and saves us. So you are welcome tonight. I'm going to let Sam lead us in a quick song. Come tonight and let us pray for you. Amen. Please come. Um, I have this little impression. I'm just going to throw it out there. Um, there might be a sense of the fear of the unknown. You know, uh, sometimes transition does that. And uh, 
it's like I haven't been there. I don't know what to expect. And it might cause you to feel like, uh, draw back a little bit, maybe uncomfortable, maybe uncertain. If that's you, if there's a little bit of that, you want to move that so you can be all that you're made to be in this next season. Whether you're, whether you're a young adult, I mean, uh, you becoming a young adult, or whether you're going through transaction anywhere in your life, you know. Uh, maybe you're here and this place is a little different. You don't know what to think of it. But maybe you sense that God is drawing you and saying, would you like to come a little deeper? Would you like to know me a little more? Can I reveal my burning heart to you? I would encourage you to come and, and have somebody lay hands on you and pray for you. Because there's something about the laying on of hands. It's just an impartation of faith. The Holy Spirit works through human hands. And I'd like to invite those that can relate to anything as my mom or I've been saying. Oh, do you want to come back and have a family time here? prayer and give ourselves to the Lord afresh.
I want you to get, where's the hospital at? Where's that hospital? Which direction is it? The hospital that Andy's dad is in. Crystal, which way is that? Herman Hospital. If you guys uh, are, can hear me, I want you to stretch out your hands to that hospital right now. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna come against the spirit of death. So Lord, we thank you for your power. And your name is above all names. It's above cancer. It's above death. It's above in front of you, Lord. And God, we release your life, your healing. And we come against the spirit of death. We bind you, we break your power. 